up the game. So we're loading in, whatever, and we see we're playing Kitty Cleave, and we're fighting against this Destrolock, Ellie Shaman, Recipe Team. So, at the very beginning, I know that LSD is a very strong comp, especially against something like a Cleave, because it has a lot of healing, it has a lot of damage, and the Druid has a lot of mobility. So, important things to note about this matchup is that Druid has port. Uh, what that means is the Druid can Displacer Beast, which is a 20-yard range blink, and then he can port back to his uh, to the Warlock's portal, and then he can gateway across the map. So he has tons and tons of mobility. So, it's really hard to stick to Druid, and that's why they have such high survivability. Another very important thing to note about this comp is that it is a Destro Warlock, meaning the things you're going to want to look out for is the Bane of Havoc, Death Coil, into Demon Soul Chaos Bolts. Those are the scary moments, is the Demon Soul Chaos Bolts. So it's usually followed by a Havoc on one of the two DPS into a coil with something on the healer, and the Warlock goes ham with Demon Soul. So you always want to kind of be watching for that. The, the Havoc is the giveaway. So that's another thing to note. So we talked about the Druid and the Warlock, and now we talked about the Ellie Shaman. Ellie Shaman, things to watch for is Ascendance, and when he's doing something like an Ellie Blast Burst, or his Trinket procs, or you're just getting procced on by a lot of Lava Bursts, just this team here is always going to keep you on your toes because they have so much burst that can happen at any time. So, as critically as this is a scary comp, the strategy is to go on the Druid, but if the Druid gets away, you can kind of swap around, go on a different target to kind of bring the Druid back to you, instead of just Mongoloid chasing the Druid, and that's kind of how we do it this game. We don't always hit the Druid, but most of the time we're trying to stick to him as to keep up as much pressure as we can. Um, and you're going to see kind of how I, one second, Sorry about that. So you're going to kind of see how, as I the Feral Druid and my teammates, we kind of coordinate and uh, do our thing to sort of um, counter this and uh, win. So the game, opening gate's not too important, just kind of skipping ahead. All right, so we're going to run and we know we can't stop gateway on this map, but it's fine. Um, another thing to important to note is it is Ruins of Lordaeron, so this is a very big map with a lot of open space and positioning in the room is very bad. So you're going to often not want to go in. So right now we're just opening on the Druid. So we open on the Druid, we instantly force Barkskin, that's fine. I'm going to go back and kill the Shroom because it's always a good thing and a good job as your Feral Druid to kill the Druid's Shroom. It's very important. It's a 100% healed for him if he gets it stacked up, So and it's probably already 100% because it's in the room. So if you kill that, he kind of doesn't have that to fall back on. So preemptively doing that before you kind of get your burst going, don't really waste combo points, just melee it, is a very good thing that a lot of Feral Druids may not do. It's important when you're fighting Rest of Druids, always kill the Mushroom. So we're just opening on the Druid, trying to get some pressure, um, and you're going to see what kind of unfolds in this game. So I kill the Shroom, and I'm going to instantly get back on the Druid. We see he gated across the map, and the Bane of Havoc comes out. So, right now. This is what I'm talking about. We see the Ellie Shaman's popping Ascendance, and we get Bane of Havoc Death Coiled. Like, this is what I was talking about versus this team. You know this is when the pressure is coming. And we see a full Howl on Elite. So I know we're in trouble. Instantly, I know we're in trouble, because the Ellie's popping all his cooldowns, the Lock is popping all his cooldowns, and the Druid's away, and we have no pressure. And me and Vive are both coiled into Demon Soul Chaos Bolts. So since I know we're in trouble and I'm a healer, I'm going to react accordingly. So I'm sitting this coil. I know huge damage is coming in, so I instantly, before the Chaos Bolt hits me, pop my Shield Wall. Instantly. Shield Wall or Sock before the Chaos Bolt hits me. Now, you may not always want to do this, blow all your defenses on the first Demon Soul Chaos Bolt with Ascendance, but the reasoning I did that was my Pally was full CC'd. So with my Pally being full crowd controlled in an 8 second fear, and the lock doing approximately 150k chaos bolts in a death coil with demon soul and the Ellie shaman casting lava bursts the thing is that wall doesn't actually do that much if you're on low health so walling super early before the chaos bolt hits me will actually prevent more damage in the long run and will allow me to be, be at a higher health pool what i mean by that is if i wall at like 30 percent the wall is really only effective for tanking about 15 percent of my health bar but if i wall at 60 percent it's effective at tanking 30 percent of my health bar so instead of being at say like 30% and with walling you basically go up to an imaginary 45%. I'm actually going up to about 90%, which is a whole lot more effective. So that's why I did that. My healer was CC, Demon Soul Chaos Bolt coming out. I just instantly pop shield wall so we don't fall behind. So then the game keeps going. I'm fine, you know, because I pop my cooldowns and Veeve's fine because he parried and he's a warrior. So we're just going to get back on the Druid. And an important thing to note is even though they popped all that cooldowns, they didn't force our pally cooldowns. And they only got Shield Ball and Ursoc out of me. So I still have my Bubble to fall back on. I did Trinket, but Bubble is a great cooldown. 
One thing I do note though is since I use so many cooldowns there, I have to be kind of scared because now I only have bubbles. So I have to be more cautious than I normally would. And a lot of Feral Druids don't know that. But if you don't have a lot of cooldowns as a Feral Druid, you're a pretty dead rat if you push in and you get stunned. Your Feral dies faster than any other class if you have nothing. You have no damage reduction. You have nothing without cooldowns up. So always be aware of that. But since I do have bubble and I'm popping cooldowns and I still have Heart of the Wild up, I'm able to push in on this Druid. So that's my reasoning for pushing on the Druid. So I'm okay. So just pushing on the Druid, I try to kick the worst on clone, doesn't end up happening. So I get NS clone, that's whatever. And we're just continuing our pressure on the Druid, since he hasn't really been able to get away that much yet. And uh, Yellow Sea thinks they're doing pretty good, because you know the Druid hasn't really had to pop too much stuff yet, but we're still going on him. So I get full feared here, the Lava Burst is coming from the Ali Shaman, so a lot of damage on me. Another thing to note is, look at what I'm doing. I know my Pali is out, getting CC'd right now, he was just in fears and stuff, so I'm using whatever LOS I can to stop damage. That's another thing as a Feral Druid you need to do for caster teams. Whenever your healer is CC'd and you're by pillar, use your mobility to your advantage. Run behind a pillar, run out of LOS. That's a great thing to do always as a Feral Druid. If you can manage to do that, always do it. My healer is sitting at full hex. Of course, I will pop up to dispel that, but before he was in a full fear. So why not just dip behind LOS while my healer is in a fear? My warrior will keep up the pressure and I won't take any damage. It's a really good thing to do as a Feral Druid. Plus your energy is just regenerating and you're not really losing any damage other than White Swing. So... If your healer CC'd in a fear or something and you're fighting a high burst team like this with a cooldowns, just pop out of LOS. You see, I just ran in the room. Although you may think that's enemy territory, the casters are both outside the room. So I'm using it as effective LOS even though my healer is CC'd. So I come out, I dispel the hex off my healer, get knocked back into the room, but I'm fine because they can't really hit me in there. And I'm coming back out because I'm popped and I uh, didn't take that much damage while my healer was sitting the full fears. The dude got away, so I'm just kind of hitting the Ali Shaman and Veeb's hitting the Warlock and we're just kind of waiting to pull the Druid into us so we can get back on him. I do see here, is another moment, it's the Demon Soul Chaos Bolt with Bane of Havoc. I have one cooldown left, I have Bubble, I'm at 50%. If this Chaos Bolt hits me, I'm going to be in Shadowburn range, I'm going to die. So, I bubbles the Chaos Bolt, basically is what happens. So, I see the Chaos Bolt coming in with Bane of Havoc, I don't want to be behind, I bubble it instantly. Another thing to note, is since I bubble, that doesn't just mean I'm okay. My pally is still in trouble because he had the Bane of Havoc on him, meaning the Chaos Bolt's gonna hit him too. So as soon as I bubble, you see I disorient the Warlock and try to peel him off my Holy Pally during that situation so he doesn't have to blow any cooldowns. So what basically I'm doing is I'm trying to stop my healer from using his cooldowns and trying to use mine to the most effectiveness to prevent damage and stop taking damage and keeping him happy because he still has Trinket, Bubble, and all that stuff. So just keep going. You know, my healer's fine. He's using the room to LOS and we're getting back on the Druid and trying to get pressure again. The Demon Soul Chaos Bolts are coming in again, but it's there's no CC on my healer, so I'm not too scared. But my healer does get full Halotera there and full Feared, so, and I'm in a full Fear, but the enemy team really isn't doing that much damage to me. They're on Veeve, so he's the one in trouble here, so I don't really have to worry too much about my LOS. But if I was being the target, I would probably have run behind the tomb. So we're just kind of messing around, like hitting the Druid, hitting the Warlock, doing whatever. It's not too important to kind of focus damage on Kitty Cleave until you get a, like, a clean setup on the Druid with stuns and stuff. So we're just trying to prevent damage while we're doing stuff. So I see my healer gets put into a full clone. So you see instantly what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. I'm going to try to run to the room. That's where I'm instantly headed. My healer gets put into a hex. I dispel it, but I didn't actually go into the room. But you guys saw I was kind of heading back that way when my healer's in the fear. So if I needed to, I could have LOS. But since my healer's not in CC, I'll be okay. My healer's completely DR'd on CC, and we're going to go in the Druid. Here's the Bane of Havoc again, but... The death coils really aren't that great, so we should be okay. I still, um, it's still a little, car a little scary, but we know he doesn't have any demon souls anymore because he already popped two of them. So these are just non demon soul chaos bolts, so they're just a little bit of damage. We're not too scared of them. Still sticking to the druid forcing his cooldowns. I'm pushing in here, although it may be scary to push in. I know the casters are both way, way, way out as a feral druid, so that's another thing to note. Like, it's to note when it is okay to push in and when it's not to be okay to push in. I knew it was okay to push in there. I had trinket, but the warlock just used his havoc and a bunch of embers on chaos bolts, so I'm okay to push in. It's always important to note the enemy cooldown, so when you're allowed to push in and when you're not allowed to push in. So, basically, as a feral druid, if you kind of get this down, you will have a hard time dying. So, reaping the rest of druid, we get put into his thing his root, and he gates away, so I'm just instantly switching to the Warlock. I don't feel like chasing the rest of Druid across the map with a bunch of Widgers in my face. I'm just going to switch. It's a great thing to do. If a healer gets away like that, sometimes it's just good to switch off and force him back. And you see here, we're raping the Warlock. Uh, skipping the frame. So we're still raping the Warlock here. We're still on the lock. He gets down to like 30%. Druid gets full Hotsum and stuff. So he's getting raped. But, okay, see here? My healer got put into a full Hall of Terror. I'm just instantly back into the room. Instantly just walking back into the room, avoiding damage while my healer is CC'd. I'm trying to do what I can. My healer gets... Um, was being cast text on, but I think it got stopped there. And I'm full health. I didn't have to blow anything. My healer got full feared. I just ran back into the room. Healer gets hexed. I decurse it before the thunderstorm. So just trying to keep my healer out of CC. And while he's in it, just try to play defensive. So my healer's on DR for CC now. I can just run. So full clone on the healer. And you see what I'm doing. The instant that Druid NS clone my healer. Look at that. 
the instant the druid and his clomite healer, I ran back into the room. And we'll play it again because it's like really, really important. So we're attacking the warlock, blah 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 blah. Forcing cooldowns on him, da 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 da. Casting a cyclone, cancel it, get my partner's hexed, going on the druid. Since my holy pally is on fear DR, he's gonna be looked to get cyclone by the druid. And the druid here is going to NS clone my holy pally, and I instantly run back to the room. I have no trinket, I'm gonna be in very big trouble if they go on me. I run back to the room and hide. Very good thing to do as a feral druid, no trinket. Even if you have wall up, very good thing to run. Often trinket and wall should be used in unison. So just, you know, sticking to the rest of Druid, we're getting him really low because we've been playing super careful. These are not demons of chaos bolts, so we're not too scared again. Just run behind the pillar there, and Drew gets put into a full meme and dies. So, just kind of reviewing that game. We fought against an LSD. They were pretty high. They were around, I think, 23, 2400. And every time I either got CC'd, I just kind of ran out of LOS. It's a great thing to do while keeping pressure high. It's like, Kitty Cleave, if you live long enough, eventually you'll fucking kill something. You have a lot of damage, but... Versus Wizards, it's kind of hard to live sometimes because your healer gets put in so much CC and you die. But if you play like that, play defensive when your healer CC, try to make him use as little cooldowns as possible, yours will come back up, and everyone will be happy. If anyone has questions on that game, I'll answer them now. Or I can go over it again if you want. Or can anyone... Is anyone here? Hello? Or are they all just like listening to me ramble? No one said anything. I'm assuming everyone was watching. If I have any viewers. If anyone has any comments or anything, feel free. Now is the time. 